Hi, I'm Greg from Seabird Sighting. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to clean the flow path on a HydroCat EP V2. If you've used the HydroCat EP V1 before, this process is exactly the same. Supplies that you'll need for the cleaning procedure are a bin to catch the effluent, a 5 32nd inch hex key, the cleaning solution pre-mixed. This is a 1% non-ionic surfactant, 99% deionized water. A bottle of deionized water or clean fresh water, and the tubing from the cleaning kit. Now we have two roughly 9 to 12 inch pieces of the 3 8 inch inner diameter tubing, and then we have our plastic syringe uh, with the smaller tubing attached to it. I would also recommend having some paper towels on hand to collect all the water that splashes from this procedure. So the first thing we're going to do is use a 5 32nd Allen key and remove the anti-fouling guard from the hydrocat. We're doing this to remove the toxic TPTO anti-fouling chemicals so that we don't contact them during cleaning, and also to expose the hose barbs of the intake and the exhaust. So I'm just loosening these two cap screws, and then this piece comes right up. Okay, set that aside. Next thing we want to do is take the tubing that's applied in your cleaning kit and affix that to post barbs here. So I like to cut this to somewhere between 9 and 12 inches. I'm going to take this here. And I like to take a piece of rope or a rubber band. Just put it around the instrument so that your tubing stays in place. Next, you're going to take the syringe that comes in your cleaning kit. Attach this little white piece to the tip of the syringe and then put on the smaller diameter tubing to that, and then feed that into the larger diameter tubing. This is the same diameter as this tubing here. Now the first thing I'm going to do is flush this out with clean fresh water, in this case deionized water. So I'll take some DI water, fill up my syringe, and then put this Now, if you find that your oxygen data or your conductivity data seems to be low of correct, a good first step is to just flush it out with clean, fresh water and then catch the effluent to see if any sediment comes out. So I'm just pushing and pulling this into the flow path to loosen any potential sediment. And then I'm going to take it, pour it out into a container, and see what comes out. Now, the bottom of the hydrocat does not have a perfect seal, so you might see some water leaking out on the table. That is perfectly okay and expected. Okay, so because this one is clean, I don't see anything, but if you see some sediment coming out, I would recommend repeating that procedure a couple of times and then cleaning it with this surfactant solution. So the next step is to repeat exactly what you just did with a dilute surfactant solution. So um, what we typically do is um, take a 1% solution of Triton X or Turgitol. This is a non-ionic surfactant that we can use to clean the conductivity cell and the oxygen sensor. So I have a pre-mixed 1% solution here. I like to take that, fill up the syringe from this end, see the bubbles forming inside of the syringe. Put that back. Fit the tubing onto the instruments. And then do exactly what we did before. Push and pull the water through the flow path to remove any biofouling, any oil, anything that could be throwing off your instrument's measurements. Okay, when I'm done with that, I'm going to remove this tubing, get all of the soapy water out of my syringe. And then pour the effluent out of the hydrocat. Now, currently I have quite a bit of 
solution inside of the flow pan. So what I'm going to do is then take some DI water. You can either get some new tubing or clean syringe or repeat it with this one. And repeat this process a couple of times until you see that there are no longer soapy bubbles inside of your instruments. Okay, so I ran clean deionized water through the flow path about three times before I stopped seeing any bubbles. Depending on the concentration of your cleaning solution, you might need to do it more times than that. If you leave a little bit in here before your deployment, that's okay. The pump is going to run water from your deployment environment through the flow path and will pretty quickly eliminate any residual cleaning solution. Your first few samples just might look a little bit strange. So what I'm going to do now is remove the tubing from the instrument and reinstall the antithelic guard. Now I'm confident that this is now clean and there's a couple of checks that you can do to ensure that your instrument is, is clean and is running smooth. Uh, one thing you can do in the UCI software for the HydroCat EP is you can run the conductivity check using a conductivity standard solution. What you can also do is run your conductivity sensor in air and compare that to the zero conductivity value on your calibration certificate. If those values are within a few tenths of a hertz of each other while your conductivity cell is clean and dry, then your instrument is clean and ready to deploy. Thanks for watching. For more information on the HydroCat EPV2, click on the links below or visit seabird.com.